Ferrari. A game of two cars at Maranello. Prost has won half the races so far to sit at the top of the table and is looking like he has at the very least the capability of bringing Ferrari their first driver's title since Joe Schechter in 1979. They'd be looking better in the constructors table though if Nigel Mansell hadn't broken down so often. Five retirements out of eight entries appear to have been the last straw for Nigel who's just announced his retirement. No doubt various team managers will be trying to persuade him to reconsider while the competition to be his replacement in 1991 will be fierce. The question for the rest of 1990 is how much he's motivated to give his best for the team and how much they're prepared to support him. Tyrrell Ford The team started with a bang with the Lazies, Heroics and Phoenix, and a point for Nakajima at the same race, lest we forget. And while they've never quite hit the same heights again, the new car looks great and the Lazies clearly a future winner, and possibly a future champion. Though probably not for Tyrrell, his contract runs out at the end of the year and Ken's unlikely to be able to keep hold of him. Nakasan is clearly not quite at Jean's level and to be fair to him he's had the lion's share of technical issues too, but he's bringing Honda power to the team for next year which is all that really matters. Williams Renault The Renault engine is one of the most powerful out there, but aside from Patrese's win at Imola to end his long drought, the team give the distinct sense of underperforming. The feeling in the paddock is that the reason for that lies between the seat and the wheel. Bootsen and Patrese are both likeable and popular, but most seem to think that they're journeymen rather than true championship contenders. And although he's won twice, Bootsen in particular is seen as having disappointed overall and has a lot to do to keep his seat going into 1991. Brabham Judd The problems continue piling up for Brabham. After an uncertain winter with ownership worries, fifth place for Modena in Phoenix looked promising, but they haven't looked much like scoring again since. Stefano Modena has generally qualified well and doggedly finishes reasonably enough, but he's still not setting the world alight, while David Brabham, although he's a PR gift, has looked all at sea. But in the situation he's in, it's perhaps hardly surprising he's not doing his best. Arrows Ford It's not been a happy season for Arrows, with a point for Caffey at Monaco the highlight, but both Alex and his ex-Ferrari teammate Alboreto have failed to qualify twice. The team seemed destined to struggle in midfield at best, but to be fair to them, they always said this would be a transitional year, as the new owners are finding their feet and awaiting the promised Porsche engines arriving next year and a new car to put them in. In the meantime, they'll just have to do the best they can with what they have. Lotus Lamborghini The veteran team struggle on, with the eagerly awaited Lamborghini engine not in the end making the difference the team hoped. The engines are big and heavy for sure, but the main problem is the chassis, which is suffering from far too much flexibility. The two drivers are close together in performance, with Donnelly and Warwick frequently qualifying within a place or two and then running together during the race, but aside from Derek's encouraging point from Canada, there's little sign things are improving. Ozella Ford. There's not a huge amount to say about Ozella. They've done about as well as could be expected, usually making it through pre-qualifying and getting onto the grid in five races. The actual results haven't been enough to get them out of PQ, but they are promising for the future if they can grab a fortuitous point somewhere which will help their finances no end. Leighton House Judd. A pretty grim first six races of the season, with six DNQs on record which saw Adrian Newey on his way, but not before figuring out that there was a glitch in the wind tunnel that had been feeding them false data and correcting it, leading to a stunning performance in France and a less spectacular but still pretty good race in Silverstone. It seems like the car works best on the smoother circuits, so it's likely to be a bit hit and miss until the end of the season. Hopefully for the boys in Miami Blue, the morale boost from Paul Ricard will keep their heads up and the results coming. AGS Ford The little French team have found it tough going so far, with both talented drivers struggling to pre-qualify, with Dalmas making it through to Sunday on just two occasions. They are masters at making a little go a long way, but continue having to make less and less go further and further. Bennett and Ford Offering Nelson Piquet a pay-per-point deal for 1990 seems to have been an inspired idea, as he's scored in every race except when disqualified in Monaco. While Nanini's been the one with all the bad luck, but still managed a podium and fastest lap in San Marino, another points finish in Mexico, and is being talked about as a possible replacement for Mansell at Ferrari for 1991. 
They're not quite competing directly with Ferrari, McLaren and Williams yet, but they do look able to get a win if the front runners stumble. No. Scuderia Italia Dallara Ford After a great 1989, the team have slipped back a bit so far this year, hit hard by reliability issues that mean Pirro and De Cesaris have only seen one chequered flag apiece so far. The main culprit is the Magnetti Morelli ignition and engine mapping software, which is proving troublesome, but Andrea de Cesare seems to be having another one of his periodic lapses into being Mr. De Crasherist, which really isn't helping matters. No. Minardi Ford 1989 was a good year for Minardi, with excellent qualifying performances leading to points, though never as many as they really deserved. 1990 so far, however, has been one to forget. Paolo Barilla looks rather out of his depth, failing to qualify twice in the new M190 so far, while Martini took two top ten finishes in the old M189, but has only finished once, 12th in the new one. Ferrari power next year, which the team must be anticipating eagerly. Ligier Ford In 1979, Ligier were championship contenders. In 1989, they've dropped back into pre-qualifying and scarcely even looked like scoring a point with Alio's brace of ninth place as the pick of the results so far. Both drivers look solid enough, and the team have plenty of French state backing, and persistent rumours swirl that Renault are interested in acquiring the team as a potential route back into F1 as a constructor, so they will hope that things are darkest just before the dawn. No. McLaren Honda The post-Prost era is looking pretty good so far, with Senna still very much in the hunt for the title, but it's 4-3 to Alain and Ferrari so far in terms of wins, with the last three on the trot, and Senna will be looking to break that run in the next race. Berger in the second car has looked less at ease, but things have improved once he could actually fit in the car properly, and he's had four podiums and two more points finishes, and would have scored more but for some mechanical troubles. McLaren remain the team to beat despite the headway Ferrari have made and they'll be looking to re-establish their dominance in the second half of the season. LaRousse Lola Lamborghini Clearly too good for pre-qualifying all season and their good performance at Silverstone means they won't be needing to do that anymore. Three points finishes so far despite continuing reliability problems but they've also finished just outside the top six so often that they must be confident of scoring again before the end of the season. This is looking like it might be quite a good year for the team. No. Coloni Subaru The Motori Moderni turbo engines that were used by Minardi during the mid-1980s proved to be heavy and underpowered and it seemed like Carlo Chitti still hasn't quite got the hang of it. Subaru's ambitious purchase of the Coloni team and badging of the engines has backfired spectacularly, and at the end of the first half of the season, they've bowed out, sold the team back to Enzo Coloni, who has promptly dumped the engine too. He and Gasho can only hope that the second half of the season, with more conventional Ford V8 power, will allow them to do better. No. Eurobrun Judd Another team having a pretty bad year, though the Eurobrun squad seem to have little other kind. With lack of money, meaning no testing and precious little development, Moreno has done well to drag the thing into the race twice so far, but apparently this has actually made things worse, as Eurobrun hadn't actually budgeted to qualify and didn't have enough engines and tyres available. All of which makes you wonder why they expanded to two cars if they're just going to treat poor Claudio Langas as an inconvenience and only give him enough laps to avoid a non-participation fine. Presumably, his sponsorship check was worth more than the amount they've spent on him. Monteverdi Onyx Ford The Onyx team's story has been many things, but not dull. However, the current shenanigans, with new owner Peter Monteverdi attempting to move the team over the vocal objections of most of its staff to a new base in Switzerland, Carl Foytek hiring his son, and a threatened lawsuit from spurn driver Stefan Johansson and other top personnel, may well be the end, sooner or later, of what looked like a promising squad just this time last year. Life. One disadvantage of the new regulations making entry to F1 more affordable is that every industrialist with money to burn seems to regard the sport as a potential billboard. Gunter Schmidt tried with Real for two lean seasons, and Ernesto Vita can only envy his success. To put it bluntly, his car doesn't work. The revolutionary engine he's trying to promote can't do more than a lap or two before it blows up, and the chassis, lest we forget, was disowned by its original designer as unsafe. Lap times, when they're set at all, are hilariously off the pace, while the team themselves don't look like they really know what they're doing. 
If they do manage to scrape together enough money for some replacement Judd engines, things might improve a bit, but realistically, even getting off the bottom of the PQ table will be regarded as a major achievement.